Hi, I'm Julie Smith-David from the W.P. Carey School of Business, and this is a short video on how to create process models using Visio as a tool. Let's jump right in. This is the initial screen for Visio 2007. What we're going to be doing is creating a cross-functional flowchart. You can find the cross-functional flowchart either as one of the business templates or as one of the flowchart templates. When you see that template, you can click on the template and click the Create button, and it will open up the window, giving you the basic layout and a few choices for you to make. And so uh, swim lane diagrams have horizontal bands, and so you want to leave the click on the horizontal bands. Then you need to specify the number of bands. Um, for this video, I'm going to be making a uh, process model for the sales process in a fast food restaurant. In that simple process, there are four different entities, the customer, the register clerk, the computer, and the kitchen worker. So I need to have four bands in my process model. And so this shows you the basic layout for the swim lane diagram that I'm going to create. Uh, within that, there's three areas of the screen that are going to be really important for you. Obviously, you can see the model that you're creating, the page that you're going to be creating. The other two areas are the shape area over here on the left-hand side, and we're going to use this for the basic flowchart shapes. And then also at the top, there's three different um, buttons that are going to become very important to us. When we want to use the mouse just as a pointer, which we'll do when we're using any of the, of the shapes or trying to move things around or click on something on the paper, we're going to have that pointer tool highlighted. You see that's how it is right now. When we draw the lines between the different process steps, we're going to use the connectors. And if we need to add any text and we want to change to text mode, we can click on this button and we'll be able to have text. So I'm going to click on the title bar and you'll see that it'll highlight the process name. I'm going to name this Fast Food Restaurant Sales Process. I'm going to go back in and spell that correctly make the FAST capitalized. Um, and after I give it a title, then I'm going to give each of the swim lanes the name of the function that's going to be represented. Usually you do these top to bottom in the order that the person or the entity appears in the process. So our process is really triggered by the customer. After the customer is going to interact with the register clerk, The register clerk is going to enter orders into the computer, and I'm going to make the computer its own entity, its own swim lane, so I can show steps that the computer does. And then I've got the kitchen worker, who actually makes the food. Now my swim lane diagram, I can continue to adjust the zoom on it, and if I switch back to the width, now you can see the whole diagram. I'm ready to start adding the process steps into my model. You place the process step in the swim lane for the person who's going to perform the step. If the step's going to be performed by two people, it can overlap the swim lane so that it shows that those two people are working together. In general, there are the basic steps, the basic symbols that we talked about before, and the oval is what's known as the terminator, and that's used for either starting or stopping. And so I'm going to start right at the top with the customer. And after uh, the customer is going to start, what the customer does is the customer places the order and pays for it. So I can actually put two steps in one box if the customer does both of those things simultaneously. If they happen as two separate activities, then I could make them two different uh, rectangles, two different process steps. Below that step, I'm going to put that the register clerk enters the order and collects the money. The computer is going to process the order. The computer does do something that is really important to the people. It displays the order in the kitchen. That's what alerts the kitchen worker to know what things he or she should be producing. And so the kitchen order is go the kitchen worker is going to prepare the order. And then they're going, they're going to prepare the order 
and they're going to package the order. Once they've packaged the order, they're going to transfer it back up to the register clerk, who's going to gather all the items, and then give the food to the customer. One thing to notice when you're moving the process steps, the rectangles around, you'll see the lightly dashed lines that appear. That lets you know if you're lining up your process steps directly across or above and below the other process steps that are on your model. If you use those to place the process steps, it'll actually make drawing the connectors easier. So this step, I'm going to give food to the customer, and the customer is going to receive the food and check the order. Now after the customer receives and checks the order, two things could actually happen. If the order's okay, then the process is actually going to be finished. But if not, we're going to have to reorder goods. So I'm going to use a decision diamond to say whether or not the order is okay. If the order is okay, then I'm going to say that we're finished. If the order is not okay, then I need to specify that a new order is being placed. So how would I go about doing that? Well, that's really part of adding in all of the connectors to show the actual order of the process. I tend to draw the connectors at the end. Other people tend to draw the connectors each time they add another process step to the diagram. You'll figure out the way that makes it the easiest for you. So I'm going to use the connector tool. When I do that, each of the little blue X's that are on my figures are able to be um, used as anchor points for the connector. And so if I put my mouse over one of those X's, it will turn red. And that means attach a connector, either start or end, to this X, the, the little blue X on the figure. So I put one on the start, and then I'm moving over and drawing and connecting it to the place order. What you see now is I've got a one-headed arrow that begins at start, moves the arrow over to the place the order. And so I just have to connect these figures in the order that they'd occur by dragging them down or dragging it across. Again, every time I'm going to attach it to a blue air, a blue X on the, whoops, that arrow isn't right. So that's why doing these with the blue X's really makes it easier for you. I'm going to come down here and move the, I'm going to come and point and move the connector so that this happens in this order. Okay, Now I can go back to my connectors and do connectors between. Package the order, give the food to the customer. The customer comes up and is going to review and check the order. And now we have to decide if it's okay. Well, if it is okay, then I'm going to say that this process is finished. If it's not okay, then I want to go back and have the order entered correctly. And so I'm going to come back in, drag that arrow over. So now I've got an arrow that started at the OK, but ends at the enter order, because the cashier is going to have to enter that order again. What you see, though, is that my arrow actually goes across that very top line. It makes it really hard to read. So I'm going to click back to use just as a pointer. And I can take that green dot, and I can move it, so that now you can see the arrow that's going from OK back to the enter order. The other thing, though, is that I'd like to have some text so that I know if it's OK, yes, what happens, and if it's OK, no. So I go back to the top and turn on the, the text tool, and that gives me a little text box. And I can say, this is what happens if it's not OK. So I'm just going to put no, and then I'm going to click over here on this and say yes. And now I'm able to see, if I click back to my pointer, that on those two arrows, I now have the words yes and no. So the diamond is used for the question. The arrows coming out of it say what my choices are of how I could answer that question and the next process steps that will occur based on the appropriate answer. That's all it takes to create a process model within Visio.